Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coats on back order, and it's time for this week's Pokemon Omega Ruby rotation battles in the free battle in battle spot. So if you didn't check out the team builder which uploaded earlier today, feel free to check it out. There is a link in the description. You can click that and check out the strategies, the health items, the movesets of the team. Currently we're looking at using Hariyama, sorry, Bukemon the Hariyama as sort of team captain. He is our previously defeated Pokemon from a past week in the rotation battles. And I'm going to be using Egbert the Togetic as well, who hasn't yet had a chance to go for the rotation battles. And for those who Pokemon, as well as the other four, you can check out the team building video. But with all that being said, let's get right into the battles right now in the Omega Ruby rotation battles. As I say, free battle in battle spot. Our first opponent is Ash from Kansas, United States. Nice to meet you too, Ash. Took it a little bit uh, buffer than I remember. So we see... Only five Pokemon, but they are legendary, all level 50, all held items. Alright, so we don't see any real ground threats, so I don't think using Tails with the air balloon is really going to make that much of a difference. But I do want to bring, I believe, would uh, Bukemon be good here? I don't know. There's a lot of Psychic and Fairy we have to worry about. I shouldn't say a lot. Actually, he might not be bad against some of these things. The nice boost from Guts would be pretty good. So I think I am going to actually lead with him. And we see some potential power we can hit off with the uh, our Roserade Axle. We can get a... We don't have any Poison Stab for the team this week, so we can't really get any super effective damage off on the Xerneas, but we do resist the Fairy Stab with the Poison side, and we can get a nice Energy Ball off on that uh, Kyogre. So I'm going to bring him... I think I'm also going to bring Pikachu, because we do see a couple of Pokemon weak to Thunder, sorry, Thunderbolt, so Pikachu is our third choice, and for our fourth, should I bring Tails? I don't think she'd be very effective against a lot of these things, so I think I'm actually going to bring Chuck the Moody Beeberl as our fourth choice. Let's start this battle versus Ash. Now, it doesn't seem to be Ash Ketchum, fortunately, even though Ash isn't known for winning that much, so maybe I'd probably have a better, sh or a better chance against Ash Ketchum. But regardless, Ash. Okay, so first we're gonna lead with Bukemon, Axel, and Pikachu. Showing off the contest ribbons, while Ash leads with Jirachi, Xerneas, and Arceus. Ooh, the shiny. Not a shiny Xerneas, or sorry, Arceus looks like, but. Alright, so obviously I can go for the fake out on anything here. I'm pretty sure none of these things have inner focus, so we can fake it out and get the flame or burn, which is the way we're gonna go. Let's go right ahead. And comes the fairy type. So the obvious move they could go for is to go for the what do you call it? The fairy type attack. So since we do have pretty good special defense in our Roserade, I'm gonna rotate into him and we're gonna toxic the Xerneas. The idea being if we can keep it in the active spot, we can then go ahead and venom drench it. And we actually outspeed the Xerneas, I wouldn't have thought. It's a legendary. But we did invest in some speed stat, and okay, there's Geomancy. That's going to be a problem. Does it have the white herb? Very well could. Or not, power herb, sorry. There is the power herb. So this is a problem. Now they might stay up and go for a fairy move. Uh, they can probably learn psychic attacks. I'm a little concerned about this. But I'm going to try to go for the Venom Drench now. I don't think they would want to rotate out. And they probably figured their speed stat means that they're going to be able to get off an attack against our Roserade, so we're going to try the Venom Drench. Let's hope for the best here. They're going Geomancy again. So this is actually kind of counteracting. So they don't have the White Herb now. Okay, I keep saying White, I mean Power Herb. So they're going to gain another plus two boost, but they just lost one. So they're at plus... They're currently at plus one. So we have a turn to actually hit them with something. Because right now they're going to get the stat boost. So I think probably our best bet, go in for a nice powerful Earthquake from Bukemon. Let's see how much damage we can get off on this thing. We do have the Guts boost. And this, I believe, increases the speed and the two special stats. I didn't actually pay attention the last time it did it, but let's see. Special attack, special defense, and speed. Right, okay, so physical attack should be still pretty good against this thing. Not as much as I would have liked, of course, 
but one more turn of Toxic will bring it actually down. Okay, so, basically, who do I want to sacrifice at this point? I think, uh, Pikachu might be the best one to drop, unfortunately. I hate saying that. He's one of our main Pokemon in the team. But I think probably that's our best bet. If he does survive, I want to get the light screen up to deal with any special attacks that the opposing Pokemon... Oh, they're going to switch. Okay. So let's see. They go for Wish. Now, Wish should kick in before the Toxic, of course. Right, so light screen is up now. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate into Axel. I'm going to fire off an Energy Ball. They can bring the Xerneas back up for the healing, which they're going to do. If we can survive the hit, they're going to protect. Oh, very clever. Alright, so we're facing a team of legendaries with held items and a trainer that knows what they're doing. They actually have really good strategy. So the wish comes true, but the Toxic is still boosted in the amount of HP it's draining. Okay. Again, I do think Pikachu is the way we have to go to essentially sacrifice him if that's what happens. But we're going to rotate in him and go Discharge. No, I'm going to Thunder Wave, actually. If the Jirachi comes back up, we can Paralyze. There's Jirachi. You can wish if you like. Future Sight, okay. Well, our Light Screen is active. I believe that still does block the Future Sight damage. So Shiny Jirachi is now Paralyzed. They don't have that Wish anymore. I want to go for an Earthquake on this thing, but I can't risk the Arceus coming... It's not... I keep saying... Why did I say Arceus? I can't risk the Xerneas coming up and going for a powerful move. I'm going to go with the Body Slam attack. I'm not going to do anything to the Jirachi, but it is our most physically... Well, it's our only physically offensive move on Pikachu. If Xerneas comes back up, which it doesn't, they actually stay active with Jirachi. So, hardly any damage. It wasn't bad for a resisted attack, though. And full paralysis on the Jirachi. Now, do I want to go for the Earthquake from Pokemon? I'd really like to. I'm going to risk it. They could rotate the Xerneas up right now, but they probably won't because the toxic damage is going to be pretty bad against it. So let's hope we can get a KO or at least some really powerful damage off on the Jirachi with the Earthquake. Let's see how much we can do against the Steel-type. We almost bring it down. And there is Wish. So they're probably going to rotate into their Xerneas and go for Protect again. Super effective Future Sight. Our light screen does keep us quite protected. I'm going to bring Bukemon back to the Pokeball because that way we still have the Fake Out pressure to use later when he comes back in. So we're going to switch out into our Moody Beaveral. Now we're going to see what the White Herb actually does. If it'll block or eliminate the stat drop from Moody. So do we see a rotation into Xerneas? Alright, let's see what we can do with our Beaveril. And one of the things I kind of regret is the fact that we didn't actually catch our Beaveril in a Dream Ball, because he is from the Dream World. It'd be a nice little way to commemorate where he came from, but... He actually survived that, which is nice. Okay, Moody is going to boost his attack while dropping the accuracy, but the White Herb does kick in, okay. So that was Judgment. Did we see what type that was? It was neutral against him. This might just be a normal type. No, it was actually holding an item. Hmm. It could be ground type. But still, all things considered, I do believe Pikachu is the Pokemon we can sacrifice. I'm going to go Body Slam, which would be enough to take out the Jirachi, possibly the Xerneas. Hmm. I'm actually just going to Light Screen once again. I don't think Pikachu is going to outspeed the god of Pokemon. And the Judgment. Can you tell what type this is? It's super effective. It's a ground type. Okay. So that's going to be neutral against everybody that we have. I don't want to use the Fake Out right now. I want to save that for some pressure once we can deal with this Arceus. But I believe Judgment is special based, so therefore I think our Rosary can handle that the best. I'm going to go ahead and go for... Do I want to Energy Ball? That's really the only thing we can do at this point. I'm going to Energy Ball the Arceus. 
or the Xerneas if it comes up. And what's it going to go for? Moonblast. Well, we resist that. Our special defense is pretty decent. We hang in there. We're going to get an energy ball off. That might not get the KO, but I'm pretty sure the Toxic will pick it up. Get some Black Sledge Recovery. And do we get this KO with the Toxic? Down goes Xerneas. Excellent. Alright, so we got to watch out for a Ground-type Judgment from the Arceus. Vaporeon is in. Our only way to deal with that will be our Grass-type here, so we have to preserve him. I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to try going for the Super Fang attack and see if the... Well, if the Arceus comes up, then Chuck's not going to survive a hit anyway. I think probably Bulldoze is our best bet. Try to lower the speed stat of somebody. So they're going to go with Hail, which will be residual damage on all sides of the field. There are no Ice types to be immune to it. And we're going to slow this thing down a little bit. Actually, that was pretty powerful. Oh, the attack stat for Moody, right? The boost. All right, our HP is pretty low. If we can get a speed boost from Moody, that would be pretty good. Possibly outspeed the Arceus. Attack rose again, while accuracy falls. That's not the best. But we did just slow the Vaporeon down. I think we have a good shot to go with the Energy Ball from Roserade if he outspeeds the Arceus, which could come up for a KO, though. Let's see here. They stay active. The Energy Ball does fire off on Vaporeon, dropping another Pokemon on the opposing side. So we have one shot to go for the Fake Out Pressure from our Hariyama. Would they just sacrifice the Jirachi right now? I want to use the Fake Out on the Arceus. So that being the case, I think... Hmm. I'm going to go with the Energy Ball right now. Ah, it's not good. Flamethrower. Yeah, we just lost our Roserade. So, the only real thing I can do is try to fake out the Arceus. Let the hail do a little bit more damage, of course. None of our Pokemon are going to survive a hit from this thing. That's the problem. If we could actually survive one hit, we could get the low sweep off, but that's not going to be something that we can work with. We're just going to go for fake out. So that's hardly any damage to worry about. But we do flinch it, of course, giving us one more turn in this battle. Hmm, and the burn is bringing us really down low. Let's just go all out. Let's try a low sweep and hope we can possibly avoid a judgment or whatever else it goes for. But cosmic power! So we're going to boost your defense stats. We are going to drop your speed, though, with this. Now we're about to lose Bukemon thanks to the hail, oh, that, not the hail, but the burn, because the hail did just stop. I wonder, would our Beeberl outspeed now? I'm going to go for the waterfall, that is our only chance, we're going to try to flinch this thing out. And with two attack boost, yet an accuracy drop, I don't know how this is going to play out. We can't outspeed Arceus, not just after one speed drop. Alright, so we're going to get the drop on Jirachi. What did it go for? It has some sort of speed priority. I'm not aware of it. Now, can we get a moody speed boost? Because the Jirachi falls. What do we get? Speed rose sharply. Accuracy fell again. We're all banking on this waterfall. Alright, this is it. This is all we have. Unless this Arceus has extreme speed or something. Come on. Waterfall pull through. We connect. Arceus falls to our Beeberl. It's kind of a shame on the opposing side, but we pulled through really well. I love this battle, Ash. This was fun. Our final opponent from Okinawa, Japan. Let's see what they have to offer. All level 50s, few held items. We see some possible Mega Evolutions in two of these Pokemon, because they do have some held items, possible Mega Stones. 
and we see a couple of legendaries as well. Alright, so since we don't yet have a win with Egberthy Togetic, I am going to bring him as the lead. And what would be the best way to go to help out some of his weaknesses here? So he is going to be weak to the Rock of Diancy. Possible way to deal with that could be... We don't have anyone that would resist it except for Bukemon, but he'd be whipped to the fairy type. Plus, I kind of don't want to double up the two Pokemon that I haven't used yet or that haven't been defeated, so... That being said, I think maybe our best bet is to go with our specially defensive Roserade Axel. We can get a super effective energy ball off on that thing. Other weaknesses could be the ice type Curum. And we do have... Well, he'd be... Uh, uh, Egbert would be immune to the dragon attack. We have a resistance in both Tails and Chuck. But Tails would be weak to the Greninja, so I think, maybe... Actually, I'm gonna bring Tails. We can burn some things, which would be nice. And the final one... I can get some speed control with the Bulldoze from Chuck. But everything except for the Sand Slash, we can actually paralyze with Pikachu's Thunder Wave. So I'm going to bring Pikachu as choice number four. There we go. Alright, the final battle gets underway. Let's see what my opponent pulls off in these bat or this battle. So let's see what you have as your leads here. Good sir. You're going to lead off with the Diancy, Curum, and Blaziken. Now if that is a Mega Blaziken, of course it'll have the speed boost ability. So, obviously the Diancy can go for a Rock Attack. Hmm. If I rotate into our Roserade, Energy Ball will be super effective, but they can rotate either of the other two, other two Pokemon up to be immune to it. But I could Toxic anything I want. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to Toxic. Alright, let's see. They actually stay active. I could have got some super effective damage off. They don't actually Mega Evolve, which is nice. And we see a Diamond Storm attack. No, return, actually. Normal Gem Boosted Return. They don't have good physical defense, but apparently Diancy doesn't have very good physical attack either. So obviously we can go for the Venom Drench right now. Would they expect that and rotate something else in, though? possible. The Blaziken could get some good damage off against us, so I think probably I'm going to lose the air balloon if they actually connect us, or connect against us with an attack, but I'm going to rotate into our Ninetales, and our most effective move on everything here is going to be Psy Shock. Let's go with that. And they rotate into a fighting type, nice. Mega Blaziken, do they go for a fire move to boost our Flash Fire? We have Flash Fire, don't we? I don't remember if I mentioned that in the Team Builder. Alright, let's see. So we actually go first with Psy Shock. Okay, one more is going to do some good damage. Will we get that Flash Fire boost? Nice. Of course, they do have the Speed Boost, however. So with our Fire Moves now boosted, Do we want to go for a flamethrower? I still think the best move right now is going to be Psy Shock. They could rotate the Diancy and go for a rock move right now, though. And would Axel survive a flame burst? Because if so, we could weaken this uh, Blaziken first. You know, all things considered, I don't think Axel. No, Axel's. We need Axel for this Diancy, so I'm just going to go with Psy Shock. I'm going to rotate into the Cure Room. So can we get some good damage off on this, perhaps? Probably not. No, nothing really super good, but they're going to Giga Impact, which we dodge. All right. Hmm. I'm going to try the Flamethrower. They might bring up the Diancy, but they stay active. They go for Protect, okay. So with Giga Impact being a thing... I might want to go ahead and rotate into Egbert and maybe go for Reflect. Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna Reflect. 
Try to get our physical defense up nice. As I go for a dragon type move, totally immune by our fairy type. So the reflect is now up. So dragon breath to get impact. I think I'm gonna go ahead and rotate into our Roserade right now. And just go for the toxic once more. All right, so I stay active with the Cure. So we're gonna get some residual damage off on this thing with poison as well. Now, what do they go for? Dragon Breath. All right, our special offense is pretty crazy, so this is hardly gonna do anything to us, I'm sure. We do get paralyzed, but we do have the possibility of restoring our status with the aromatherapy, so that could be something to go with. But, first things first, I'm gonna rotate someone else in I want to try to get some good damage off on this. I think probably our best move right now. I was thinking Signal Beam, but the Blaziken will double resist that. So once again, our best move is going to be Tails with the Psy Shock attack. And in comes the Fighting type once more. Flame Burst once again, no effect on our Flash Fire ability. And some good damage off with the Psy Shock. We're not going to get the KO unless we get a critical. Well, I'm not sure what happened there, unless we got a really low roll last time. Does Blaziken lose special defense when it Mega Evolves? No, because we actually hit it as a Mega Evolution. I have no idea what just happened there, everybody. But now we have a pretty free shot to go for a Flamethrower. So let's give that a try. We are Flash Fire boosted. Almost bringing it down, but the Earthquake is going to... Actually, no, I forgot, we still have the Air Balloon. Flamethrower away. Well, wait, they could bring in the Diancie. I'm going to rotate and go with the Energy Ball of our Roserade. What do they go for here? Oh, they actually dig. Well, we have a free turn to go to our Fairy type right now, or our Flying Fairy type. And there's full paralysis anyway, so that doesn't matter. A little bit of Black Sledge Recovery. We have a good shot to go in. Yeah, I was going to say, reflect if we don't have it up, which it actually just fell. So this Sand Slash has Earthquake and Dig. So a free shot to get the Reflect up now, as the Dig has no effect on us. So I'm still thinking I want to go for Flamethrower. Really be unfortunate if the Diancy comes up to resist it. But let's do our best anyway. I'm hoping to burn either the Sand Slash or the Cure Room. Oh, they're gonna actually end it right there, so. Technically, I'm gonna say we won that one because the opponent gave it to us. Good game. And so, in the end this week, we managed to gain a victory for both Bukemon, the Hariyama, and Egbert, the Togetic. That first match was pretty kind of luck-based, but it actually was pretty fun anyway. It was an enjoyable one. That last one, although we didn't get to actually play it to completion, I think we were set up pretty well to uh, take the win. We could outmaneuver the opponent, and the only possibility that they could have actually caused a problem against us would be if the Diancie came to deal with our Ninetales. But all things considered, we, I think, kind of had a pretty good advantage. So that is going to wrap up this week's Pokemon Omega Ruby Rotation Battles. This was week 18, if I'm doing the math right. That actually leaves us with only one week remaining, and there are two Pokemon that are yet to be used in these rotation battles, and those two are going to be... If I can find my information here, here we go. Burrow the Ninjask and Snapper the Totodile. Now, I have actually brought them on teams in the past, but I never brought them into the battles yet, so they haven't actually had their shot on the field of battle to try to get a victory. So I'm going to bring those two for next week, as well as a team of other Pokemon to try to help with their type weaknesses. So if there are any Pokemon that fit that bill that you want to see from my collection for next week's battles, our final in the rotation battles, leave me a comment down below. Let me know which Pokemon of mine you want to see. If you want to see them as Mega Evolutions or as regular Pokemon, whatever you want to see, I want to try to put together a team using those Pokemon. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of these battles today and any suggestions for improved movesets or strategies that I could implement in future battles using these Pokemon that I use today. With all that, I want to say thank you for checking out the battles today, everybody, in the Pokemon Omega Ruby rotation battles in the free battle in Battle Spot, and I will catch you next time.